God will not trust you until he tests you. Because God don't trust your mind. He saved your soul, but your mind ain't no good. And it's not as a man believe it, so is he. It's how a man think it, so is he. So God got to change your thinking so that your behavior could change. The Bible says, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. And transform means what? Change. That means if your mind ain't changed, you still ain't changed. I don't care how you shout and dance and preach and speak in tongues. If your mind ain't changed, you still ain't transformed. And God will take you in the wilderness and everybody here has to go. Oh, hear me. I don't care who you are. God will take you through the wilderness because he won't trust you until you make it. I don't care how great your vision is or how awesome your purpose is or how much big things you want to do in life. God won't let you start until you go through the wilderness. Now what's in the wilderness? He says he took him there to test him. There are three tests you must pass before God trusts you with freedom. Write them down. First test is a test of appetites. You got to pass that test. You got to test your appetites. God will check to see if your appetites are under control. All of them. Your sexual appetites. Well, some folks want to preach with their mouths and can't keep their zip up. Okay. It's so sad today. We got men and women of God rushing into the ministry. Can't wait to start a church. And they haven't put their loins under control yet. That's why there's such disgrace in the church. We got anointed heads with unanointed loins. Oh, come on, clap your hands, somebody. You understand what I'm talking about? We need to be changed. Our minds need to change. God will test your appetites for food, for control of your appetite. And that's the first test Jesus had to pass. Appetites under control. And he passed it. The second test you must pass, you're going to like this one, is the test for power. God will test you to see if you want power. Going after power and control. A lot of people are in the ministry for the wrong reason. Some folks want to carry the pastor's Bible for the wrong reason. Oh yeah, I know they're there. Yeah, you got folks who will do anything to get a little position. God will test you. Brother, when you don't want the position, God will give it to you. Right where you are, work hard. Do the best you can. Don't look for promotion. It'll come from the Lord. The devil said to Jesus, come on this pinnacle and jump down. And you'll make yourself famous. You see, if you're still looking for fame, you ain't got the right spirit. Some folks rush into the ministry because of the big break. Lord help us. We got some talented people here. I mean, you could sing, you could play piano, you could play a saxophone or something. And here comes a guy who heard you play, and he says, look, I, 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 I want to put you in the studio, man. You're pretty good. Yeah. And you say, yeah. Yeah, this is, this is your big break. Yeah, my big break. Yeah. Now listen, uh, we don't want you to mention Jesus when you sing, though. Now we'll give you $200,000, we'll pay for everything for you, but just don't mention Jesus, okay? This is your big break. We'll promote you in the secular market. We'll put you on MTV. We'll fix you. You just remember, don't mention Jesus and everything going to be all right. Time for your big break now. Then you got the other side. You even got some great men of God, women of God, who would come to a young uh, whippersnapper. And say, hey man, you preach good. I want you to come over to my church and take over the youth department. You even ain't sure he's saved, saved, saved. Yeah. Man, I, I just like the way you preach. Yeah, anybody can have a gift and don't have character. We got some men and women in the ministry who were called into the ministry by ministers instead of God. Yeah. 
This stuff got to stop now. Nothing in the world is worse than artificial growth. Come on, somebody. Huh? Artificial growth. They take those hormones and put in those chicken eggs. Chickens grow overnight. Full of hormones, fat and plump. And make you sick and get cancer. And we got some saints like that. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, they come. Didn't have a chance to be tested or tried or go through any tribulation. And all of a sudden, they put a sign over a door front saying, they got a church. Brother, you got to run your home first. Pastor your children first. Pastor your wife first. Pastor your neighborhood first. Then try and pastor the neighborhood. There are people in the ministry who need to go out of the ministry now. Go and start over again and help someone to father you before you try and father people. God will test you for power. People are hungry for power. And the third test God tested Jesus for, he can test you for it too, is the test of pride. Oh, that's a serious, subtle one. So if you bow down and worship me, I'll give you all the glory and the splendor and all the authority and influence of this city. I'll give you all this you see if you just worship me and you can be in the pride of life and you will be somebody and I'll make you important. Boy, what a tempting thing. And that's in the church. May God forgive us. But God going to take you through the wilderness before he brings you into freedom. And can I suggest that when you pass the test in the wilderness, he will take you across Jordan. 